Welcome to Faith Wine International Ministries. Today's sermon is by Pastor Albert Kang. Today we are going to share about to share about becoming the person that God wants you to be. This is a new year, and we have always wanted to be something, somebody. But the best thing to be is to be the person that God wants you to be. The first notion I want you to take note of is that God wants you to succeed. Now, sometimes in the churches, we do have this wrong idea that God wants us to be loser, to be failure. You know, uh, when we talk about success, oh, that's a bad word in the church. No, success is a very godly word, very spiritual word, divinely ordained. Because whatever God did you know, in, in creation, He did it with gusto, He did it with success. And today, whatever God is doing, He wants success. So God is working in your life. So look at David. David has success in all his undertakings, for the Lord was with him. 1 Samuel 18 verse 14. For the Lord was with him. Very important for you to understand that success has its anchor in the Lord. The worldly success is a different ballgame. The worldly success is self-centered. But the, the kingdom success, it is based upon the kingdom of God, based upon the will of God. So David, even though he did a lot of wrong things, just that day, you know, my wife and I, we were talking and we said, David did worse than, uh, than Saul. King Saul just, you know, he just uh, 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 gave an offering to the Lord when he was not supposed to do so. But for David, now if I were to tell you a story, here is this pastor. He has a co-worker. So he killed the co-worker to get his wife. And you say, ooh, what kind of pastor is this? We don't want him to be a pastor. But yet, David was exactly like that. And God did not remove him from the throne. He repented. So for such great sin like that, and God could provide grace, and I want you to know now, is that you are living in the grace of God. If some of you, you are here, and you feel so condemned, your past is pressing you down. There were some wrong things that you did in the past, some mistakes, some steps that you took. They were not glorifying to God. And Satan continues to remind you and say, you were like this. I want you to know today you're being set free. Because Jesus, when he died on the cross, he has taken all the sin away. Your past, no more. Let me share with you a story about a young uh, pastor, a junior pastor. He was the son of, of course, the senior pastor. Then he married a lady, a Christian girl, but the Christian girl had a very bad past, a very dark history. She was a prostitute. Before she came to know the Lord, she was selling her body on the street of that, that place. But the day that she became saved, she was thoroughly transformed, and her life was a life of holiness, a life fully sanctified by the Holy Spirit. But the very moment when this young uh, pastor announced that he was about to marry this girl, the whole church was in upheaval. The whole church said, no way. She was a prostitute. Our pastor's son will never marry a prostitute. And some members of the church even promised to leave the church the very moment if that engagement uh, was announced. And so the young man was very grieved because his fiancé had been fully redeemed. But yet people would not forget the past. And that's what the devil likes to do, is to remind you of your past. And so, the young man went forward and met the people, met with the whole church, 
And he said one thing. He said, yes, my fiancé had a very difficult past. But the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to wash away all unrighteousness. Whether it be a single lie or a life, you know, that is darkened by sin. The Lord, upon that cross, He can cleanse you. Today you are being set free. Don't let the devil trick you anymore. Don't let the devil deceive you anymore. David became a success because the Lord was with him. Plan to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But I like the King James Version more. Now you read the King James Version. For I know the thoughts that I think are towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. How do you like that? Amen. Expected end. Means that you don't need to have unexpected end. Amen. The end has already been written out for you. Hallelujah. Your story has a good ending. If you allow the Lord, the Lord will surely bless you. Amen. The problem is that some of us may not allow the Lord to bless us. You say, how can that be? Oh, I have met. I've been a pastor for 30 over years. I've met so many people. And some of them, they refuse to allow the Lord to bless them because they say, I do not deserve the blessing. They thought that they need to deserve it. Or oh, I have not been good enough. I've not been a good boy. Therefore, I cannot deserve. I do not deserve the blessing. The Bible never say, because you are a good boy or a good girl. The Bible never say that. The Bible says you come by faith. And because you have been tarnished by sin, you can come to Him. And when you recognize the grace that He has for you, and when you recognize the mercy He has for you, you know what's going to happen? That miracle is going to happen in your life. You no longer need to take hold of those struggles inside you. Some of you may not be able to sleep at night because you are thinking of too many things. But when you start to surrender to the Lord, I tell you, the Holy Spirit comes and gives you the peace, the Bible says, that is beyond understanding. And therefore, He wants to give you peace. He does, he, he does not want to give you evil. He wants to give you an expected end. And so, I want to say that you can only be a success because success is becoming the person that God wants you to be. Success is not having a big house, a big car, or a big wife. No, I'm not, not, not big wife. But, <laughs> all right. Success is not having all these big, big things, big companies and so on. Success is becoming the person that God wants you to be. Because God has given you gifts. He has given you the talents. And then He wants to maximize everything in you. Some of you are very gifted people. You can write songs. And you have been writing on your own and you have not been sharing in the church. And we don't want you to go to your grave with a lot of songs inside you. Some of you can write books. You are a blessing to many. You have a lot of great ideas. You can help people improve their lives. But you are not writing those books. It's already 2016. And you got this dream in 1996. Long time ago. And you haven't even put pen to paper, ink to paper, and to write down that dream. You see, the thing about being a child of God in the kingdom of God is that God wants you to go to your grave empty. Close off, empty. Absolutely empty. Empty of any gift, empty of all the talents that you have. Because you have been, you would have maximized your life, poured out everything that you have. People ask me, Pastor, at 61, you want to start a new church? Yes. Because if you reverse it, I'm only 16. Yeah? So 16 is still very young. Amen? Yes. I don't feel 61, really. If Colonel Sander can start KFC, I can start <laughs> this. <laughs> what is KFC? Right? And with all these young pastors helping me, 
So they are my leg men. I just for pointing ministry. Go here. Go there. <laughs> uh, very easy pointing ministry. Yeah. But you see what God gave was a dream years ago. About almost 10 years, 8 years, I think, 8, 9 years ago. We wanted to start a church, but couldn't start. Because, you see, you need three things to start a church. You need to have vision. You need to have people. And you need to have finance. These three must come together. And all the time, we'll miss one element. Vision, we always have. But people and finance. But last year, when Pastor Ambrose came into our life and Brother Carlson came into our life, suddenly the dream started to gel. Started to gel. And we got the right people. And God is so good. And these are very dedicated servants. They are not serving me. They are serving the Lord. All right? But they are pouring out everything. And they are not paid. Huh? <laughs> pouring out everything. Right? Because why? Because they love the Lord. So I want to tell you that when you start to love the Lord, you will learn one thing is that God has given you a divine assignment. Everything that God has created has an assignment. The sun created by God got to shine. The cloud created by God got to let down the, the rain. You see, uh, the wind will, will, will uh, do its work and so on and so forth. But human beings, we are created different. We are created in the image of God. Alright? Uh, tell your friend I'm created in the image of God. Yeah. Just say I'm created. Talk to your friend. You are very shy. What No, no, no. In our church, we talk, alright? If Pastor Ambrose preacher, every two seconds you're going to talk. Yeah, he said, And God said, And said, God said, Ah, then, amen, say amen. Well, every two seconds, you know. So, but mine is a bit. <laughs> All right. So I want you to know that you can become a success first by recognizing your assignment. You see, because every person who responds to God is given an assignment. Mary was given an assignment. Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was a young girl, but she was given this assignment to carry the child, the, 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 the son of God, the son of man. Mary would have said no. Or Mary became uh, pregnant and she said that, Oh dear, I have, not been, uh, I have not known a man and people will misunderstood me. So maybe I should go for abortion. What happened if Mary had gone for abortion? Then most probably we wouldn't get saved. Alright? So, but she knew her assignment, she grit her teeth and she continued, God assigns everything to be a solution to a problem. The reason why some of you are in business, the reason why some of you are being employed, is because you are an answer to a problem. An answer to a question, you are a solution to a problem. Am I right? Am I right? Hey, respond. Amen. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm right, right? Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you are a solution to a problem. And some of you are very paid, being paid handsomely for what you are doing. But who gives you these great ideas? Who gives you the talents? You say, I natural one. I born like that one. I'm naturally very smart. <laughs> if you say that, I pray that God will humble you. <laughs> yeah. Because the first thing you need to recognize is that all these gifts. All the giftings that you have, God put within you. Amen. And people recognize that and they pay you so that they can get their problem solved. So here you find that you, your, your grand purpose is to be the ambassador of the kingdom. He said, but the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. How many of you always say, uh, I say, can you help in the church? Pastor, I don't know lah. I'm a very young Christian, you know. You say, I'm a child. You see, what the Lord says is that you must go to everyone I sent you to and say whatever I command you. You can say, you know, that you're a child, but are you an obedient child? Some of you are in a situation whereby you are the king or you are the queen of your whole environment. 
am I say, am I touching some nerve now? <laughs> you are the king. Why? Because I don't care about what God says. I only care about what I say. Even God got to listen to me. You see. Now if you do that, then you find that trouble will come your way. Despair will come your way. Frustration will come your way. Because the peace must come from on high. You cannot generate your own peace. The world tries to give you peace. You cannot. The three things that the kingdom of God can give you is peace, joy, and righteousness. Righteousness. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Peace, joy, and righteousness. So if you want peace, come to God. Come to Jesus. Jesus, He is not peace. He is not peace. He is the Prince of Peace. A Prince of Peace is able to give you peace. I can tell you, I have counseled many people. One young man, he, uh, he held a very tough job. And so, he couldn't sleep. When he came to us, he was like a panda, you know? Uh, at the panda bear with his uh, dark ring. I couldn't sleep. Why? Because too much frustration, too many things to solve, couldn't sleep. Then when we introduced Jesus to him, and we said, every time when a thought hits you, you say, drop, drop. What do you mean by drop? means that you have this thing that hits you, and it going to stay with you, but because you are in the presence of God, you drop. You let it drop into the hands of God. And when he continued to drop all this off, you know what happened? He slept like a baby. Not the kind of crying baby every two hours, wake up and cry that. All right? But he slept peacefully. You see, many of us don't understand this, that God can give us divine rest if we could only ask him. And we are also to be change agent. Becoming the person that God wants you to be means that you become the center of influence. If you are mixing with non-Christian, when I was in the army, uh, in the Singapore army, if you, if you, you may not know, I'm a Singaporean pastor. So in the Singapore army, we mixed with many, many people. And I used to drink, I used to do all kinds of things that young people like to do. But the day I became a Christian, the day when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I stopped. I stopped drinking with my friends, but I began to share Christ. I sat with them, but I did not drink. I didn't smoke anymore. I used to smoke a packet a day, not too many. Some of you are smoking 10. But, <laughs> but at that point, I gave up. And my friend began to call me holy man. Holy man. But in the heart of heart, they respected the change in my life. I became a change agent. Later on, when I became a pastor, some of these friends attended my church because they have seen when I was a young person what happened. So you are a center of influence because you are a change agent. So here is Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a monk and he was a priest with the Catholic Church. But when he took charge and he felt that some of the things done by the church was wrong. Therefore, he took charge and he caused a revolution. He caused the reformation. So because of one man, he stood up against what was wrong and everything was reformed. So you have been given gifts to bless and impact others. Gifts are not just for yourself. Gifts are for you to bless others. Ask yourself how many people I have impacted in my life. If you are only building, you know, oh, I only raised my family, just my family, me and my family are no more, then it's just your family. You have impacted your children, but that's all. Within that four walls of your home. But God wants you to see beyond those four walls. God wants you to see that you can, your life can be such a, a, a powerful a testimony that can touch many lives. So your assignment awaits your recognition. What I'm saying here is that some of you, you do not know your appointment, you do not know your assignment. I have spoken to some people and they say that, Pastor, 
I do not know what God wants me to do. But let me first place this in its proper uh, perspective here. If you have been called by God to be a business person, be the very best business person that you can be. Amen? Amen. If you are called to be a dentist, where's my favorite dentist? <laughs> ah, right there. Uh, Dr. Tiagan. Huh? Everybody go and see him. <laughs> it's not free, huh? But you can see him. <laughs> yeah. He is the best dentist. Or according to my opinion, he's the best. I have been to many dentists in my life. But this one, because he excelled not just for himself, he excelled for the kingdom of God. All right? So if you are called to be an engineer, be the very best. If you are schooling, if you are an A student, get the very best A. If you are a B student, get the very best B. Max it. Maximize it. Am I right? Some of you are going back to school, right? Some of you are going to get your PhD. Your permanent head damage? No, no, no. Yeah. You can get a PhD. Get the very best PhD that you can get. And I'm not saying that you compete with others. You compete with yourself. Because that is most important. God has created you and then that He wants you to max everything that you have. You deserve to be the best. Don't let anybody say you're no good. When I was a child, my mother and my father, they had a way of being very humble. You know, Chinese pe people are very humble. So, whenever the relative came and said, How's your son? How's your daughters? Huh? Uh, how's their study? Oh, they are very stupid. Huh? <laughs> very stupid. Right? Uh, so, uh, uh, how's their standard? You know, uh, what's, what's their score? What's their mark? In, uh, in the class, you know? Oh, they're very stupid. They just got number one, but very stupid. <laughs> and you, you know, I was being raised thinking that I thought I was pretty good. But then, yeah, my mom said, you stupid. In Hananese, nang ngao leh. Yeah, you don't know Hananese. Huh? Some of you do. All right. You see, do not speak things that will cause your children uh, to be a loser. How many of you know the name of the 10 spies that went into the, the promised land? You don't know, right? But you know the name of the two spies. How many of you know the name of the two spies? Akau and Nyang, right? No, not Akau and Hey, respond. Joshua. Joshua and? Get it. Anyone name your son Joshua? Any Joshua here? Any Caleb here? <laughs> ah, Caleb here. Why are you laughing? Huh? Why you name your children Joshua and Caleb? How many of you name your son Judas? <laughs> this is my son Judas. You never name your son Judas. Huh? Why? Because we do not identify with losers. We identify with winners. God is a winning God. We are made more than conquerors. I want you to see that image. Don't always, every time when you see something, say, die, 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 die. That word is a bad word. Don't say everything, die, die, die. Huh? Say, alive, alive, alive. <laughs> Be excited about what God has for you. So here, your assignment awaits your recognition. You have to ask God. The first key is confirmation. You have to ask God, what do you want me to do? Some of you have been doing business, but God is going to use your business acumen for the glory of God. God is going to ask you to manage the business of the kingdom. So He's going to bless you. He's going to show you the ways that you have never seen before. And then, until you recognize your assignment, it cannot be appreciated. And anything that's not appreciated, you see what happened here? When it's unrecognized, it's not appreciated, you know what happened? It cannot be activated. That's why some of you have been Christian for many years. I talked to one man and he said, Pastor, I'm a very young Christian. I said, how young? Say five years. I said, five years. Five years is very old already. 
Even three and a half years became apostle. You, know? you five years, what do you do? I'm still very young. I can tell you, you reach 50 years, you are still very young. Because you do not recognize why God has created you and why He put you here and who are the people He will send you. See, for seven years, I was in Cambodia. In those seven years, while I was there in, in that place, I saw, I saw the children, the street kids. Now, I could do one of two things. I could ignore them or I could do something for them. But at that season of my life, God has given me this desire and this passion to help these kids. And so every night I would get people to cook food. And so I pay for everything, food, water, you know, uh, orange juice and so on. And we brought them to the street and began to feed the children. There was a passion for these kids. But that season was at that time. And then... During the rainy time, all the children, they were by the, by the street and so the rain, you know, the element just hit them and so they used, uh, 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 you know, paper, they used cardboard, they used plastic bags. And some of those kids were very young, five years old. And some of them look like five years old, but they are nine years old, but they're so skinny and scrawny, you think they are, they are like five years old. Took this kid, and I said, God, this is not the way. These kids shouldn't be out there. So I went and rented a three-story building and started the first orphanage. I did not come, I did not go to Cambodia with the idea of an orphanage. But God gave you the assignment at the location. That geographical location, suddenly you see, you feel, and you want to be the hands of God extended. So God began to bless me. I opened supermarket, three restaurants. I opened a business school. They were making money, and those money were used for the children. But more and more children started to come in. We got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 kids. And my money started to run out. And I said, oh God, how can, how can I take care of these kids? It costs one US dollar a day to feed one kid, one US. Why? Because in my orphanage, the policy was this way. The kids could eat anything they want and any amount they wanted. Why did I do that? Because long time ago, I watched Oliver Twist. <laughs> and I saw this boy, you know, you know, asking for a bit of more porridge and got beaten, and my heart was like, no way, not in my orphanage. If the kids wanted to eat, you feed them. We will find the money to get the rice, to get the pork, to get the fish, whatever, you feed them. And so all our kids came in scrawny, within a few months, all become very fat. <laughs> so we have the fattest orphanage <laughs> in Cambodia. You see, most orphanages, you see all the kids very skinny, right? They, they kept them skinny to raise money. Oh, look at the poor kids. People came to our place. Instead of giving us money, they want money. <laughs> you must be very rich. So I ran out of money. And you know what God did? God sent a couple, this Frenchman and his wife, American, Sebastian and Barbara. They came as backpackers. So they came to my restaurant to eat. And so they, they were very interested in helping the children. So we assigned them to help the children. And so they decided to stay in Cambodia. Then Barbara found a job with the UN, UNHCR. And she began to work for the director there. And so she presented our orphanage, the case, you know, our needs to the, uh, to the head of the UNHCR. And we jumped queue. You know, there were a lot of applications, but we jumped queue, and the UN took us in and sponsored all the children. We became the largest orphanage in Cambodia with 1,000 kids, five centers. Give a lot of clap.
I want you to know that a little vision that God gave to you can, can bring changes to many lives. Now, most of these kids have grown up. Many of them, because we, we, we open all the centers, these centers are like uh, teaching them different trades, like how to be a barber, how to be a car carpenter, electrician, and so on and so forth. All right. So the five centers, the ladies learn how to make dresses, learn how to sew curtains, and so on and so on. So, so it's a very exciting place. But these kids needed, had no need to stay on the street. In fact, if you were to open another 1,000 orphanages, it wouldn't be enough to house all these kids. There are millions and millions of them. We were only playing a little small part. So what I want you to know is that, that when you have an assignment, assignment may link to a season and a location. And later on, you shall see. So, uh, so when assignment that is not activated cannot be celebrated. Because when you start to do things for the Lord, there will be rewards. The Lord said that when you go to heaven, He's going to see whether you are a good and faithful servant. Am I right? right? So some of you say, oh, it's, everything is by grace. So now I'm saying I can do nothing, I still go to heaven. That's true. You will still go to heaven. But after you got saved, your work will be important. Because the grace of God comes in, it must become tangible, it becomes service. You see, you can do without being, but you cannot be without doing. When you become a child of God, when you become a true servant of the Lord, you start to do. So God is going to look at you and say, what are you doing with all the talents that I give you? So it, if you have done something, then there will be a time that God will celebrate with you. You are appointed as a blessing to a person or a people. Remember that. Number one, let me put this way, is your appointment. And number two, uh, your evidence. How do you know that you are created for these people or you are created to meet the needs of these people? What affects you most is the evidence of your assignment to heal and restore. Years ago, I was a cripple for about 10 years. I became uh, affected by a disease given by my father. I inherited this. He didn't give me money, he gave me this disease. So I had this chronic pain in my back for 10 years. During the bad time, I would have to uh, be in a wheelchair or take a walking stick. But 10 years ago, I met Pastor William Lau and he taught me about healing. That gave me faith to believe that God could heal me. After I learned that, everybody I laid hands on, they were healed. But for two years, I was not exactly healed. I was partially healed, but not fully healed. I still had pain in my back. But one fine day, I woke up. I normally had to roll off the bed so that the knee would land on the floor, then I would stand up. But that day, I woke up and I sprung up. I just like what you all would do, just jump up like that. And I thought I died already. <laughs> that is heaven. I look around, my wife's still here. So we must have been to heaven together. No, I wasn't in heaven. But there wasn't a single strand of pain. And so I moved around and said, there's no pain. This is very strange. I had faith to minister healing to others, but I did not have faith in myself. And I told my wife, you see this tongkat, huh? <laughs> this walking stick, put it in a car, just in case the pain come back. What kind of faith I have? But until now, the tongkat also lost already. I don't know where, where the walking stick is. Because you see, the Lord healed me. He said, if you allow sunshine to shine on others, sunshine will shine on you. As I lay hands upon other people, then God, in His right timing, He laid hands on me. 
And that's why that morning, I spun up. And I was healed. And I believe the healing will come to you today. That those of you who need healing, you just need to have faith to believe. If there is any unbelief inside you, you say, oh, pastor, you don't understand. I've been to so many healing rallies, and I'm not healed. If there is any unbelief in you, today, I want you to say, God, help me my unbelief. Help me to believe. Help me to trust. Because let me share this with you. God will not heal you because of your pain, because of your sickness. God will not heal you because of your needs. No. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. He will not heal you because you have a need. He will only heal you when you have faith. God is being pleasured by your faith. The woman with the issue of blood came. You remember her? Twelve years, blood flowing from her. She was not supposed to touch anyone. Because whomever she touched became unclean. They had to go to the temple to be cleansed. But that day, she heard about Jesus. The faith that rose up should be like you now feeling that faith rising up. You who are not feeling well, you let that faith rise up. And she rose up. And she went through the crowd. She didn't care. She didn't care whether whom, uh, who are those people that, who were those people that she would touch. She just wanted to touch Jesus. She believed that if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. You know what's that? That's faith. 100 yards from Jesus, she was not healed. 10 feet from Jesus, she was not healed. 1 inch from Jesus, she was not healed. But when she touched him, power left and touched her. You understand now? You can be in this church and not here until you touch Jesus. You can come and people will be healing left and right and you're not here because you refuse to touch him. So close and yet so far. In the last 10 years in our ministry, we talk about heal and restore. The last 10 years, God gave us, Pastor Grace and I, we had a new assignment the assignment was to teach people how to do healing. This church, we will teach you how to minister healing. Miracles will come through your hand because you are the body of Christ. When the woman touched Jesus, the woman actually touched the body of Christ. The body. But today, where is the body of Christ? Where is the body of Christ? Who? We are. Can you say, I am? I am. I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Until you believe that you are the body of Christ. You know when we heal people with, with cancer, sometimes we ask them to lay hands. I say, lay hands on me as I lay hands on you. We want to match them. We want them to touch me. Touch us. We are the body of Christ. Because power flows through. Many say, I, I can feel the fire coming out. It's not because I am oozing out fire, but because the Holy Spirit flowed to you. But do you believe? If you believe, you shall receive. But because we have doubt, doubt, doubt. And that's why you say, God, why are you not meeting my needs? God will not need, meet your needs. He will meet your faith. Come by faith. And I can tell you, by coming here this morning, some of you here, your assignment will change. The day I met Pastor William in Bangsa, that day changed. And because of that dentist, <laughs> give Dr. Tiagan a big hand. Yeah. Yeah. He was instrumental by God to organize a healing uh, a seminar. And I happened to be at his office, at his uh, uh, the clinic and he recommended me and he introduced me he said that I want you to come he invited me and I said okay I said okay but when I was on my way out I told my wife not going why not going 
I don't have the gift of healing. My wife said, Dr. Tiagan invite, you should go. No, I'm not going. And I was in pain. My ministry was teaching and preaching. I had no ministry of healing. That day came, my wife said, we are going. When the woman said we are going, we go. <laughs> amen. Men say amen. amen. Yeah. So we went. Anyway, she drove the car. <laughs> Women who can drive are very good. But sometimes they drive up the wall. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not my wife. I'm not talking about my wife. My neighbor's wife. <laughs> they drive. So she drove me there. And I was grumbling, mumbling, you know, as I'm of age now. Mumbling, grumbling, you know. And then I prayed, I said, Lord, Bangsa is very crowded. Don't let there be any parking space. <laughs> and the Lord heard my prayer. First round, no parking space. Joy, you know, just lip in my heart. Hallelujah. Then my wife said, we go one more round. <laughs> and that's when we should found a parking space. And I was a very proud man, so I said, I'm not going to carry my tongkat, okay? I'm just going to walk. You just hold me. So we, I shuffled my way up that church, up those staircases. Huh? Dr. Tiagan, you remember? And that was a turning point. When the Pastor William opened up the scripture. You see, I got a master degree in theology. I can argue with you about theology, but I cannot argue with you about scripture. He just wrote the scripture. He didn't even talk about theology. He said, how did Jesus do it? He didn't pray for the sick, right? And he looked, 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 all the scriptures. He commanded, he commanded. If he commanded, why don't you command? Why are you praying? Praying means that you ask Jesus to do the healing. But Jesus already gave you the power and authority to do the healing. So you just command, follow exactly according to the Bible. So I did. Then he called one lady to come out and he laid hands. Uh, she got this back pain and she said, back pain. And so she just put, he put his hand there and said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And she said, ah, I'm healed, I'm healed. I said, ah, this one day, you know, <laughs> they arrange on it. You know what I mean, ah, ah, come on, ah. <laughs> arrange on Because I was a skeptic. I've never seen people heal like that. You know, last time, you know what I did? I prayed for the sick, all right? Then I quickly run away because I dare not ask whether he's healed or not. <laughs> because the guy may not be healed. The next day, Pastor, see the alone. <laughs> so I was very good at selling people on a one-man rapture. <laughs> yeah, so you want to die, you call me. But this time, then he said, those of you who want to try healing, come forward. And so I was one of those who raised my hand, and I went forward, and with another brother, and this time there was this Indian pastor that I knew. So he, he was not on the, on the tape, you know? So I knew he's, he's not pretending. So he said he had three numb toes. And so my back was still painful, so I tried to squat down, and I lay hands on his three numb toes, and commanded in the name of Jesus, feeling return. And the feeling returned. And you say, oh, I can feel. But I knew this guy. He's not pretending. It's true. I continue to attend four more training by Pastor William. But all these changed my life. In the last 10 years, brothers and sisters, I must tell you, more than 10,000 people were healed through our ministry. Give a lot of clap of applause. It can happen to you. Your assignment can change because of today. You will see people healed later. So, number three, very quickly, your favor. You will fulfill your assignment by following the instruction of the Lord. The instruction of the Lord shall come through people, or shall come through the word, or shall come through something that you observe, through an event. So these are people of favor, event of favor. They shall come to you. And that right person shall come to you and speak the word. Sometimes God will use you as a person of favor. This church 
is now established because of the people of favor. See, God has blessed many of you financially. You have financial freedom. And many of you came to me and said, Pastor, this is 10,000. Pastor, this is 3,000. Pastor, this is 5,000. Pastor, this is 1,000. This is 500. And so on and so forth. You want us to start this because you share the same dream. So you see, you become the people of favor for us. And we pray that we will be people of favor for you. That your whole life will be changed because you listen to the Lord. And then your location. God's assignment for you has a geographical location to be activated. It's not just anywhere or everywhere. It must have a location. Some of you, you are from overseas and you're being you're been sent to Malaysia so that you can be activated. But we prayed and we felt that our assignment there was, uh, is not yet. It's not yet. It may happen, but it's not yet. But for right now, we are going to put ourselves here and this is the season of growth in this place. If you want to grow spiritually, you want to grow as a servant of God, as a child of God, then you know what? This is a place. We will put you to work. But you want to sit, this is the wrong place. Next time you come, there will be no, no chairs. All you stand. <laughs> no, 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 there will be chairs. But we say, don't sit. Don't sit. Don't waste your life. Those of you from Malaysia, you used to watch this uh, movie or drama. It's called Yan Sang Yao Kei Tong Wa Sap Min. Remember that? No, that's a long time story. Miss Life, how many 10 years do you have in your life? Some of you are over the hill and the deal already. Am I right? So some of you are older than I am. But you see, what we want to do is that even on earth, if we don't have much time, but whatever time that we have, we are going to maximize it for the glory of God. Amen. All right? So we, we got to do it. But you check God, what is your season? And then when God gives you an assignment, He will give you provision. And the lack may be the evidence of a change in your assignment. Some of you are already in business, and suddenly you find that your business starts to have lack. You find that financially you are in bondage. Then maybe God is speaking to you that there must be a change in your season. I have known of a businessman and God began to shut down his business. He was a pretty good guy. Make a lot, made a lot of money. But then within that one year, everything that he did failed. And you say, what happened? Because God was trying to get his attention. And he said, yes. He said, Pastor, let me tell you something. Years ago, God said to shut down this business. And I did not listen. You did not listen. So God will shut it down for you. Yeah. So he quickly sold off everything and went into ministry. So now in Bible school. Nothing wrong to be 40 over years old and still be in Bible school. Because you can't give to people what you don't have. You've got to go to Bible school, get trained. Right? So it's important. But lack may be the evidence of a change of your assignment. And let's go very quickly. Seven is passion. What you are passionate about may be the assignment that God is giving you. Some of you, God will send you to Myanmar, like this is in Myanmar. We went to Myanmar and we ministered. But God did not ask us to stay in Myanmar. We went to Shanghai and ministered in the underground church. Uh, we taught people how to do healing. But God did not say stay in Shanghai. Even though we like that place. Right? God sent us to Beijing. God sent us to uh, Bangladesh. God sent us to India. But those were not the location. Our assignment right now is right here. You. If you come to this church, you are part of the assignment. We have to learn how to disciple you and walk with you until you become the person that God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. So, becoming the person that God wants you to be, in conclusion, I say, your appointment, your evidence, your favor, your location, your seasons, your provision, and your passion. These pointers are to help you to discover who you are. 
Like we say this morning, God is willing to heal you if you are willing to be healed.